Hi, welcome to White Data Fabric. And today, let's go for synthetic text generation. To start with, and as in any data science project, you need to ingest your data. That's what I'm going to do through our data catalog. In Fabric's data catalog, it is possible that you can consume the data from several different sources. We, we offer scalable connectors for object cloud storages all the way to integration with other platforms like Snowflake and Databricks. In here, and because today I want to use two different data sets, the Amazon reviews and the medical publications have ingested them through a plot file. For each and every data source that I've added, uh, I have a very detailed profiling that goes from the number of rows all the way to highlighting potential problems that you might have with your data set. So for example, duplicates, if you have missingness, uh, but of course, uh, you might also want to have a very good understanding for each and every variable with, for example, word cloud, also the uh, how does it goes in terms of length, average length, how does it look like, the, the sample of data that you have available, do you have uh, words that are particularly more frequent than others, of course st stop words uh, might, might be the most common. Um, you can also see correlations, for example, and even missing data that we, in this case, we don't have, but might be important and impact your use case. In the case of the medical publications, we do have the same uh, uh, information available, but here I can see that almost a third of the data set is actually a duplicate. So this might be important uh, for your use cases. You might want to address this later on on your process, uh, either before or after the synthetic data generation. Um, and for the, the data generation itself, I can use our synthetic data module through the UI, but today I want to show you how easy it can be just doing it through code. For that, I just need to copy the code snippet and explore labs, have it copied, and go to the labs where I already have one running. The labs are just Jupyter notebooks or VS Code environments where you can benefit from um, the Python package that you love combined with white data proprietary tools. Uh, inside the labs, I do have already a pipeline set where I have a very specific flow that I want to have it run recurrently. So I have the data being read, profiled, and afterwards some uh, augmentation and data augmentation with synthetic text generation. As you can see here, um, I just have a, a few lines of code. I have the synthesizer being fit in three lines of code with uh, uh, where I just selected the model that I want to use uh, uh, in order to have uh, uh, the process fully running. And then I want to generate some samples um, and I want to define how many samples I want to generate for each and every run of my flow. This is the pipeline that I want to run, and let me show you how the results look like, remembering that uh, every time this pipeline is running, it will generate synthetic data uh, with the size that I have defined. Going back here and uh, entering the details of the pipelines, uh, let's see how the results uh, look like. As you can see here, I'm going to start with the Amazon reviews. I have the same pipeline run twice for two different data sets. The only difference is definitely the input data that was used to run the pipeline. In this uh, successfully run pipeline, I have the synthetic Amazon reviews in the first step. You can have a look uh, of the original data. As you can see, the original data does have the look and feel of a typical review like it's a more casual language um, always uh, written focus towards a product uh, or an experience uh, combined with a sentiment it can be positive neutral negative it depends but you see that pattern for each and every one of these um, examples right so and while generating synthetic data, and because I want to generate synthetic reviews, this is are exactly the properties that I want more, my synthetic data to replicate. 
as you can see here, this is also the profile. So with all the details, this is useful to have it integrated in the pipeline because let's say we are just uh, making this process run for all the new data that is incoming into my systems. I want to make sure that I can still observe how the real data looks like in terms of distribution. Does it look the same? Does it follow the same expectations and distribution that I have observed during my training? That's exactly what you see here. So every time that I run this process, I have right away a good understanding how the real data distributions look like. And the second step, I did generate some synthetic data. And that's what you can see here. First, uh, you, what you can see, uh, observe is right away, it's definitely the, the synthetic data, it's not the same as the original data. And furthermore, you also have some privacy preserving properties that are observed. Meaning for any PII that was identified, that PII was actually deducted. You can do that uh, automatically with our um, systems, our system do read the data, identify automatically any potential PII and have it deducted. But you can also determine or define some terms that are specific to your proprietary data. This is highly useful if you are using proprietary data to be injected in LLMs for fine tuning or RAG with external services where you want to keep some uh, properties of your original data. Um, there are not exactly names, last names, but they are actually properties specific to your business. Furthermore, we also embed in a two-hour process differential privacy. And this allows us to have an extra layer of privacy that is so important when leveraging proprietary data. In the synthetic data that we have generated for the reviews, remembering this is a review, uh, a typical review, you can see that the language of the generated data is still very casual. You can see that there are longer and shorter reviews as it's normal, uh, but more importantly, you can still understand there is a sentiment associated with each and every review and uh, oriented towards a product. The product can vary and that's what you can observe uh, here with augmented data. But in different use cases, have different properties in terms of language. So, and to show you how our synthetic data is able to very well capture those differences, I'm going to jump um, and show you the medical publications data set. Different from the reviews, this data set uh, is actually uh, more structured in a sense that the language is more formal. You see very technical terms being applied. The context needs to make sense. So uh, whenever you are combining some terms, they, they, they do make sense and they, while existing together, um, they only exist in the same context. And that's the type of properties that you want to make sure that your synthetic data replicates. So you see the structure, you see this type of diseases, technical terms, medications, combined within the same context and you want to keep that type of structure. This is a longer kind of uh, text. Some of the abstracts are a bit bigger. Um, so let's see how the synthetic data went. So the same process was applied here. As I mentioned, you have again the profiling and in our second step, we have the synthetic text generated. As you can see here, you are able to observe that we are still um, removing or deducting some of the PII that might exist within the data set. But above all, uh, you observe that the synthetic data is very different from what was seen on the review. So the language here is definitely more formal and you still have and can observe some very technical terms being applied. So the structure that was observed actually on the real data is very similar here on the synthetic data, even though this are not exactly, they are not the same records. The, 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 the type of data generated is a bit more lengthy, just as we observed on the original one. Um, and the terms that are applied are not always the same. So different 
satellite data have different contexts and that what you can that's what you can see here i hope you have enjoyed and um how you can use and leverage white data fabric to generate and augment um, and embed more diversity into your proprietary data while ensuring that um, its privacy is preserved. This is very useful, especially if you want to uh, use your proprietary data in order to reg, fine tune, improve um, a more gen generic a large language model with your uh, specific terms from your business while ensuring that no information that is important is leaked um, into outside of your premises. So I hope you have enjoyed and thank you.